Episode 1, This is Why Kissing is So Complicated. Today on Lily's Terrifying Experiments in Social Awkwardness, it's Besos. Hand on shoulder, lean in to the left, cheek to cheek, tiny air kiss. Repeat on the other side. Check locally as customs may vary. Why Besos? Because I'm in Spain for our annual family vacation. Also, we are visiting my Aunt Tara, which means some kind of party. So family time, socializing, and physical greetings. All my nightmares at once. That's why I'm here, for emotional support. I don't have emotions. <laughs> of course. So let's talk about these big, scary besos. So in Spanish-speaking countries, you say hello and goodbye with kisses, like with friends or family or family friends or almost anyone, but not everyone. But it's just like little air kisses, right? Exactly. You don't need to be me to think of all the ways it could go. <laughs> okay, it's party time. I mean, besos time. I'm so not ready for this. I'm gonna mess up in front of everyone. Oh. It says here, some people may not want to be greeted with a kiss. I guess the custom is changing with the times. Not helping, Zari. Now there are even more ways to mess up. What if I give a beso to someone who doesn't want one? If you gave one, it would be a tragedy, because in Spain, you give two besos. It can't be one in other countries. Try not to overthink it. The simplest thing to do is to let the other person lead, like a dance. Ooh. Don't forget, to be polite, you have to individually greet everyone! Wait, everyone? Episode 2, More Than 15 Million People in the U.S. Do This. VR, there's no way it's gonna look real. It looks so real! Whoa! I can feel the sand under my toes! And the ocean breeze on my face! Junior, is that supposed to be you? Hola, mi amigo! Welcome to the Spanish Simulator 3000, where I'll tell you all about the Spanish-speaking world. Over 500 million people speak Spanish, and it's the official language of 20 countries. Actually, I'll show you. The Spanish-speaking world is really big, with all different types of environments, from deserts to rainforests. Some even have snow. But one thing is for sure, they all have delicious food. I can even smell it. Mmm, cilantro. Wow. Where did that guitar come from? Did somebody say maracas? Music is a big deal, too. Lots of countries have their own genres of music, and it's some of the most popular music in the entire world. This is incredible. <laughs> Lots of people are learning Spanish, too. In the United States, over 50 million people already speak it, and it's the most studied language at all levels of education. Like for fun, for work... <gasps> There's so much to see, learn, and love about the cultures of the Spanish-speaking world. So sit back and relax. This is the best thing that's ever happened to me. I think I love this game. <laughs> <laughs> My apartment! Best video ever! <laughs> Episode 3, The Duolingo Guide to Partying. What's up, people? We're in Oaxaca, Mexico, all dressed up for Booyah! Vance Cardigan for the win! A quinceanera party! My first! I've been to a lot of quinces, which is why I know we're too early. You said a quinceanera was a grand celebration of a 15th birthday. Why arrive late if it's so major? Well, it is major, but we're not late. The invitation says 5, and it's 4.58, and I'm ready to dance. Truly an angel on the dance floor, but I'm telling you, we're early. Okay, everyone, prepare yourself for the party of the year. Ha <laughs> ha. Okay, seems like Lynn was right. Oh, but meantime, let's do present reveal. Actually, I brought something way better. Ta da! With all this waiting around, by the time we get to the quinceanera, she'll be 30. In Spanish-speaking countries, if an invite says a party starts at a certain time, it usually means to arrive a couple hours after that. Very much my vibe. 
Lynn, check out my shoulders. Ooh, the mariachi band is definitely playing. I can sense it. It's barely 6'11". Only elders and top tier cousins are arriving. Lynn, it's seven. Only really good friends are showing up at this time. <gasps> Wait, that's us. Okay, find the biggest prize on the wall. We need to cash in the tickets now. <laughs> I'm okay. <laughs> Finally, let's try this again. Prepare yourselves, everyone. <gasps> Episode 4, This is Why Avocados Are Such a Big Deal. Hi, everyone! It's Vikram! So, things have gotten a little hectic since I answered this question in my last video. How do you say avocado in Spanish? Good question! I think it's aguacate! I didn't realize it, but I sparked this huge debate, and everyone was asking me to pick a side. I even got made into a meme. So I learned that in Spanish, names for things can vary a lot depending on the place you're in. And so can definitions. Like coche in some countries is a car, in others, a baby carriage, and in some places, even a pig! <laughs> How is that possible? Hashtag car baby pig. So, the majority of Latin America uses the word aguacate, which originates from the word for avocado in Nahuatl, the language of the Aztec Empire. But in places where the Incan Empire ruled, like Peru and Chile, they use the word palta for avocado, which comes from the Quechua language. So, which one is the right word? Well, both aguacate and palta. Two words for one beautiful thing. We all love avocados, and they love us back. Mwah! We can all agree on that, right? Yes! Okay, all right. Huh? Uh, oh. Uh. Episode 5. So my grandma is teaching me how to get a date. Oh, who's the lucky girl? Her name is Natalia. She just moved here from Honduras. I might ask her out. Or I might get up to make a sandwich. It's 50-50 right now. Come on, a date's more fun, and maybe you'll get a free sandwich out of it. You do make a point. Womp womp. I tried, Grandma. I asked her a question, and she just responded, K, and then we typed K back and forth, and then nothing. Dating is so confusing. But sandwiches are simple, right? Just two slices of bread and unlimited possibilities. Let me see. Hmm. I know that. Hmm. What? My hmm means your friend is using Spanish texting abbreviations. Oh. So you know how in English we text LOL or TYSM? Well, other languages do that too. K, which means what in Spanish, is abbreviated with the letters K or Q. So the letter K doesn't mean okay. Oh, so she was asking what, and I just kept on saying what back? Mm-hmm. Moving on. This one's important. J-A-J-A-J-A -A 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 or J-E-J-E. E-J-E -E means ha-ha-ha or he-he-he. Oh, I see. And X can mean poor, like XFA is short for por favor, and XQ means por qué. But X can also mean beso, like XOXO. Oh, I feel a little bad, but also hungry. Bungry? Bangry? Need food. Oh. I was gone for literally three seconds. Yimmy. Ah. <laughs> grandma. <laughs> Not cool, Grandma. You were taking too long. I needed some drama. So now your date tomorrow is at seven. She wants to go to that new sandwich spot and you offer to pay. And before you ask me, no, Lynn, you cannot borrow any money for your date. But if it all goes well, maybe one day you can text her TQM or Te Quiero Mucho. Mm. Episode 6. This is why you are so dramatic. You. The English language uses this single word for nearly every situation. 
Ah, but in Espanol, this one word becomes two. Tu, tu, or usted? That is the question. Usted is for formal occasions. Elders, teachers, bosses. Tu is for informal occasions. Children, friends, pets. It seems simple enough. But Spanish-speaking countries can use these two different words, well, differently. <coughs> In Venezuela, a group of friends may use tú. <laughs> Salud! But in Colombia, a group of friends may use usted instead. The proper use of tú and usted varies by country to country, and sometimes even can vary within the different regions of a country. And if this already sounds confusing, some countries like Uruguay or Argentina may replace tú with vos. Why must this be so complicated? I do not know. But I do know this. If you are unsure what to do, you could always be more polite and use usted. Or if you are comfortable, ask, can I use the informal you with you? Te puedo tutear. Thank you, thank you. <sighs> Episode 7, The Kind of Filter Your Mom Uses. Hi everyone, it's Zari! I mean Zarita! I'm reviewing this new filter! Let's... Let's nod. So, in English, diminutives would be like saying doggy instead of dog. Lily, we agreed you're gonna point when I say the words! No, you agreed. Not even as a little itsy-bitsy favor for your best friend! Please! Oh, fine. But don't expect me to be my usual charming... And that, folks, is an example of diminutives in action! I might have asked Lily for any old favor, but I made it extra polite and sweet. A teeny favor. And in Spanish, it's easy. All you do is add an ending like ito or ita to a word, or in this case, cito. So favor becomes favorcito. Okay, take two. So, in English, diminutives would be like mommy instead of mom. Isn't that right, Lily? Yep, that's right, Zari. But for the record, I do not use mommy or mom. I refer to my mother only by her government name. I'm sure she loves that. But in Spanish, it can be used to indicate all sorts of things, to add a little more emotion to words. And who doesn't love more emotion? That's probably why Spanish. Yeah, 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 we get it. This filter makes things like smally, cutesy, politey, and affectionate -y. Exactly! Now for the filter field test! <laughs> Oh! <laughs> so we're back! <laughs> we might have broken the filter! <laughs> we? Who's we? <laughs> you broke it. 